Hello and welcome to the back of the new facelifted BMW 7 Series. To my left we have what is to many the big barge benchmark, the Mercedes S-Class. And on my right we have Audi's high-tech A8. And in this video we're going to tell you exactly what is the best luxury limo that you can buy. But before we do that, believe it or not, you can actually save more than £10,000 on any of these cars over at our website whatcar.com at the moment. So if you are in the market for one or indeed any other new car, make sure you click the link up there at the top of the screen to get a quote from one of our trusted dealers. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for lots more videos like this one. So first up, we're going to take a look at the interiors of these cars, starting with the 7 Series. Now, for the facelift, there have been a few changes. The first one that you probably didn't miss was the front grille. BMW says it's 40% bigger than it was before, and we'll let you decide if it's also 100% uglier. But inside, the infotainment system gets updated software, and the voice command system has also been improved. So now you can say, hey BMW. Hello, what can I help you with? So now you have voice command in a similar way to what Mercedes offers as well. Also in the interior, you have a fully digital driver display and also improved semi-autonomous functions. It also gets thicker acoustic glass on the side and rear windows with improved sound deadening around the rear seat area. But what's it like inside? Well, the answer is very BMW. That means it's incredibly robust. You can see no wiggle there with incredible high quality materials all throughout the dash and the interior. But it also does just feel a bit like a supersized 5 Series, apart from a smattering of different buttons and dials down here. It's starting to feel a little bit last generation BMW, especially when you consider the slightly more glitzy interiors that you can get on the latest X7 and 8 Series. So for a flagship saloon, it feels a little bit off the pace. And if we're being particularly fussy, the seat heating and massage functions feel the weakest of the three here, even on its strongest settings. The infotainment system though is first rate. So whether you're using the dial, touchscreen, or the voice command system, iDrive is incredibly easy to use and the best of the three, packed with features. Now the A8 just claims overall victory for quality in here because the leather, it's all the really soft, fine grain stuff, the buttons and the dials, they all have a really nice weighty feel to them so they feel expensive and everything just feels that bit better bolted together than it does in the other two cars. But it's not all good news because the interior design, not exactly exciting, is it? And that's fine if you prefer something, shall we say, a little bit more conservative. But if you'd rather have a little bit more glitz and glamour, then it probably isn't for you. Our biggest complaint though is the infotainment system. Now, the previous generation Audi A8 had a dial controller right about here, very similar to the one that Doug's just talked about in the 7 Series. And it was great, really easy to use and not at all distracting when you were driving. But this A8, the latest version, has not one but two touchscreens in place of that. Now the bottom one, that controls things like the air conditioning and the heated seats, and it's the one at the top that deals with all the infotainment controls like the sat-nav, the Bluetooth phone, and the stereo. As touchscreens go, it's not actually too bad at all. It does respond quite quickly and you get some haptic feedback so that you know that you're pressing the screen properly. But it's still a touchscreen and some of the icons are quite small, so using it while you're driving is inevitably more distracting. But Audi's virtual cockpit is brilliant and its digital instrument dials are really configurable and they're the best in the class. Now it might surprise you to hear, but the S-Class actually doesn't match the other two when it comes to outright build quality. But you can argue that this is the most special feeling interior here. It's got a really elegant design with real wood metal detailing, and everywhere your eyes fall, there's plenty of leather. Plus, you get a full 64 different color settings for the ambient interior lighting. You also get these widescreen displays which stretch out from the center console to behind the steering wheel. And while the infotainment system might not quite be as good as iDrive, it's still far easier to use on the move than the A8s. But we all know that in these cars, it's what's in the back that matters. Now we've got long wheelbase versions of all three cars, so it probably doesn't surprise you that there is a frankly ridiculous amount of space here in the back. And all three have options lists that you can tick away at and frankly burn money. For example, this particular 7 Series that I'm in now has £18,000 worth of options, which is enough to buy a whole Ford Fiesta. Now you don't need to spend that sort of money to get a properly first class feel in here, but we would be tempted to consider adding the rear seat comfort package because for around £6,000 you get these TV screens here and massaging rear seats. 
But if that's not enough, you can also add executive lounge seating. Now this car doesn't have it, but what it allows you to do is on the left-hand side of the car, move the front seat all the way out the way, and you can even use the backrest to rest your feet. These electric blinds here are also really useful because as well as keeping the sun off your laptop screen, when you're trying to close an important business deal, they also give you a bit of privacy. Audi's managed to spend a full £10,000 or an entire Dacia Duster on extras in the A8. But there's no real luxuries in the back. But if Audi did go full, no holds barred on the options list, then you can still spec the rear of the A8 to a very similar level of luxury and technology that we've seen in the other two cars today. It's actually easiest to get carried away with the options list on the S-Class. And this particular car has near enough 20,000 pounds worth of extras on it, including the executive equipment line package and the rear seat luxury lounge package. Now, those things together add electrically adjustable, heated and cooled rear seats and a massaging function along with these TV screens. But those two packs together add around £10,000 to the price on their own. So it's a little bit more expensive to get all of those features than it is on the other two cars. When it comes to boots, there's little to separate these cars and there's no doubting they are all big. The A8 and 7 Series can fit in eight carry-on size suitcases. The S-Class could only manage seven, but that's partly because the S-Class we tested had the individual rear seat package, which reduces the boot capacity slightly. Without that extra, you could probably squeeze another carry-on suitcase in there. BMW has always suggested that the 7 Series offers something slightly different in this class to its rivals. Not only is it great to be driven in, but it's great to drive too, BMW says. But that might be stretching things a little bit. After all, we're talking about cars that are well over five meters long. So it's fair to say that none of them really tackle a corner in the same way that an Alpine A110 does. You can still hustle the 7 Series along a winding road, but it can't hide its bulk. The steering is light and smooth around town, but the lack of feel won't make you want to break a sweat in it on some country roads. But the more important thing in this class here is ride comfort. Now the 7 Series gets adaptive air suspension as standard and the ride is impressive. However, it's still not quite as comfortable as the other two cars. Especially at low speeds and around town, it just doesn't feel quite as settled and relaxing. When you're out on the motorway, things do smooth out and it is very comfortable, but it just doesn't have the level of sophistication and comfort to its ride that the other cars do offer. There are lots of impressive engines to choose in the 7 Series as well, and they range from the sensible but impressive 730D that we're driving now, all the way up to the monstrously quick V12 M760 Li. But we'd say the real pick of the range is the 745 LE. Now that's a plug-in hybrid, so it means you benefit from an electric motor paired with a super silky smooth six cylinder petrol engine. So you have really nice, quiet, low speed refinement and it's backed up with incredible performance as well, all with palatable running costs. So for those reasons, it's our pick of the range. Now you can't get a plug-in hybrid version of the A8 just yet, but the three litre V6 diesel that I'm driving now called the 50 TDI is really impressive. Performance is great, and if you think all diesels are quite noisy, clattery things, then think again, because this engine is really smooth and quiet. There's only really one annoying thing, and that's the gearbox. It's absolutely fine when you're actually accelerating because it shifts through the gears quite smoothly. But when you ask for that acceleration in the first place, there's quite a long delay before it actually arrives. And that's quite frustrating when you're pulling onto a roundabout or out of a junction or something like that. If you'd rather have a petrol, then there's the 55 TFSI. It doesn't have quite as much low-down grunt as the diesel, but it's still well suited to the A8. Push on a bit and you will notice the A8 is a little bit wallowy through the corners compared with its rivals here, but much more importantly, it is the most comfortable of the three cars. So no matter whether you're sitting in the front or the back, you will enjoy one of the smoothest rides in any class, in any price bracket. And as a bonus, the A8 is also the quietest of the three cars. But for lots more information about the way the A8 drives, just click the link up there at the top of the screen for our full video review. Before watching this, you might have been thinking, surely the S-Class is the most comfortable car here. Well, it's true that the car's reputation goes before it. Its name has become synonymous with luxury, and it's a car that has led the way in automotive opulence and technology throughout its long life. But times have changed, and these days, the S-Class's ride isn't quite perfect in every situation. Around town, you can feel the effect of larger imperfections reverberating through the interior, 
although to a slightly lesser extent than you would in the 7 Series. But the A8 is actually more comfortable at lower speeds. Once you crank up the pace, then the S-Class's ride becomes supremely supple and comfortable. But still, the A8 is a little more settled. The S-Class is slightly more entertaining to drive, though, with more naturally weighted steering and impressive body control. As for the engines, there's a lot of choice. The entry-level S350D diesel is really impressive and the sensible option in the lineup. But if you went for the 400D, which we're driving here, then we could see why. It has even more punch off the line and is still silky smooth. Both the petrols on offer are six-cylinder engines with mild hybrid systems, offering quick, smooth and quiet performance, while the plug-in hybrid S560E, which is actually in the process of being updated for the next model year, has a similarly low CO2 and refined offering to the 745 LE. But if you're more interested in epic levels of performance, then don't forget you can get the full-blooded AMG S63 and S65 models, both of which are hilariously quick and sound brilliant. But the M760 Li would beat them both in a drag race. But what are these cars like to buy and run? These are the most important things you need to know about buying and owning a luxury limo. In terms of brochure prices across the lineup, the S-Class is the most expensive, whereas the A8 and the 7 Series cost around about the same. For ultra low CO2 emissions, check out the plug-in hybrid versions of the S-Class and 7 Series. On all three cars, there are a couple of trim levels to choose from, but we'd stick with the entry level trim because it represents that little bit better value for money. As standard, all three can park themselves. The A8 gets adaptive cruise control with steer assist. In the 7 Series, you need a pricey optional package to get steer assist, while the S-Class only gets cruise control as standard. You need to pay extra for adaptive cruise and steer assist. As we've already mentioned, if you want a properly luxurious feel in the back of any of these cars, you will need to add at least one or two option packs. The Audi A8 is expected to hold on to its value best over three years, with the S-Class second and the 7 Series third. These three manufacturers don't have the best records when it comes to reliability, according to our latest reliability survey. BMW was found to be the most reliable of the three, but even then it finished 16th place out of 31 manufacturers. Audi was 20th and Mercedes was a lowly 26th. The S-Class is also expected to cost the most to service over three years by quite some margin. The 7 Series should be the cheapest. None of these cars have been tested by safety experts Euro NCAP, but you can be assured they are all incredibly safe with plenty of active and passive safety systems as standard, and a few more on the options lists. So, how do we pick a winner? Well, in this class, it's the entry-level diesels that still account for a huge chunk of sales, and when you compare those models like for like, it's the A8 50 TDI that just comes out on top. And it does so because of its incredible ride comfort, supreme build quality, and near silent interior at a cruise. But the S-Class is still a fantastic limo, and it's definitely a five-star car in its own right as well. And even the 7 Series is a really good luxury limo, particularly after this facelift. Okay, it might not have quite the same interior as the other two cars, and it doesn't ride quite as brilliantly either, but it has the best infotainment system of all three cars, and it's available with a really good plug-in hybrid option as well. For more information on all of these cars and every other rival they have, go to whatcar.com for our extended written reviews. And remember, we're the place to hopefully save you some money on your next new car as well. So when you're on our website, go to the new car buying section to see how much money we could save you on your next new car. And please subscribe to our channel because we're gonna be doing loads of group tests and new car reviews in the future.